animigos, and welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Corshid, also known as at Stephen K. Piano. Together we are coding compadres, animation amigos. Oops, I doubled my face. Hold on. Hey, there we Whoa. go. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, <laughs> I guess that does really make you shusha. Shusha, yes. <laughs> shusha. Well, uh, <laughs> together with two of us, we are Code and Compadres, Animation Amigos, Boolean Buddies, and Keyframe Companions. Yeah, so we're going to be creating a lovely animation from scratch live using HTML and CSS today. I left the JavaScript part out. Yeah, I think accepted. Knock, <laughs> knock that off the list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this show is made possible by your support. You can pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers or uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons around the video. Uh, we've got some additional links down below. We also have uh, some sweet merch. Uh, yeah. I'm wearing one of them right now. Are you? Are you? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so yeah, I've got the retro JavaScript shirt on that the green screen loves. David's got the Keyframers logo one. Uh, yeah. Actually, if you go check that out right now, there's actually three, wait, three, four, four new designs. That, hmm. that can't be right. That can't be right. Brand new designs in the merch store. Wow. Wow. That in is... my backyard. <laughs> Sorry, we'll we'll try and uh, calm calm that down. Yeah, four new designs. Um, you you definitely want to uh, check those out. Go to keyframe.rs/merch and see those now. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, the new CSS lines. Yeah. Uh, I state machine, finite state machines. Yeah, totally gonna jump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I figured yeah, you might. And Mm -hmm. Also, I have some ideas for some state machine lease stickers. So, you nice. know, if you have any ideas for stickers that you want to see us make, then, you know, let us know. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have, too. So, you know, reach out in the chat or comments. Uh, hello to everyone on Twitch again. Last week we were on YouTube. This time we're on Twitch. So yeah. we're just trying things out. And and we're, uh, we're open to... Uh, kind of your your feedback on that so let us know like what what platform works best for you if you really prefer twitch or you really prefer youtube uh obviously that mainly affects watching live uh because we will always have the archives up on on youtube for you to check out later if you're not able to usually catch us live uh mm -hmm. but if you do like using twitch as a live platform uh then let us know or if you prefer youtube let us know. You can leave a comment or hit us up in the chat or on Twitter. Uh, we just we want to hear from you. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you are watching this later on, on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash keyframers, uh, if you're short on time, you can skip ahead to the animation summary using the timestamp link down below uh, for keyflections. Um, and if you're joining us live, thanks so much. Glad to have you here. Hey, Andy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... What's uh what's going on today, David? Well, Other today we're going to be working to production. We're going to be working on a um <laughs> on a heart animation, a little heart, heart button. That's yeah, right. and this is another one of those that look really simple, but there's a lot of things going on in here, a lot of nice little details. And actually, when I first saw this animation, it reminded me of an animation library from from way back. I want to say way back because I feel like it was recent, but it's actually been uh, over three years or something. Whoa. Um, it's called Mo.js. Oh, yes. And I just pasted it in the chat. And Mo.js is really cool because it allows you to create these dynamic shapes that pop out. That's That was sort of its, its claim to fame, just giving you the ability to do that. But uh, it hasn't been updated in, well, it's been updated uh, like almost a year ago yeah um yeah, still a little bit maintained uh probably mm -hmm. about as much as splitting at this point <laughs> but yeah. uh, i mean well splitting just works there's not much to maintain yeah well but... for for this uh the it, it dynamically generates svg kind of based on the particle effects or or whatever you uh you want to do so there's there's a lot of really cool uh stuff that that comes out of uh mojs it's worth mm -hmm. uh, yeah but we're going to be doing this all manually this time yeah i i just found the equivalent uh the anima icons um page uh 
I uh, shared the link in the chat. Uh, it's it's a um, CoDrops article, apparently. Uh, but yeah, showcasing these kinds of uh, particle effects, like a, a dynamic click animation. Um, so that's what we're going to do uh, with, with just some CSS. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting started already. Oh, OK. Well, uh, yeah, thanks to Christian Vizcara uh, for this like button animation that will be um, will be inspired from and we'll uh, get started with the with code yeah and so by the way dribble has these things if you don't know where you could show gifs or videos or gifs however you pronounce it and you could right click and you know be able to pause the video so if you see the video controls while we're going through and you know just checking out the animation that's how it's done just right click on the video you could click show controls why? Because it's HTML5. You yeah. know, that cool video tag that came out a while ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's, that. it's, it's very handy. Uh, normally, we'll use GIF Scrubber or something like that to scrub through. But if it's if it's one of the a newer upload, it's got the video. And you can just uh, right click and show controls and then scrub through manually. It's actually not as nice of an experience as uh, GIF Scrubber because uh, trying to get like an exact frame or whatever is is no really it's difficult. not yeah it's a little painful yeah uh all right so for the heart i'm actually going to pull up the uh code pin assets modal um, let's see yep here's perfect here's a little icon uh if you're unfamiliar on on code pin there's a little assets button in the bottom right here when you click on it it brings up uh your files if you're pro um, and you can actually upload files and use that there uh, oh, wow. There's also free design assets, including icons here. Uh, and these are just SVG icons uh, from the material design uh, repository. And so I can actually paste that in there and bam, we've got a heart to work with. Wow. Tell me more and take my money. <laughs> Actually, you all are taking my money. I, I have a yearly code pen subscription that I just forget to cancel. Well, I, I don't really want to cancel it, but but yeah, it's... well, you're you're covered under <laughs> under our team now. We have a we have a keyframers team. Uh, that's, then why so, am I paying you? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's not it's uh. not frowned upon to also pay us. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> Fine. Uh, all right. So we've got our heart. Yep. Just adding uh, a class of heart there. I'm adding a few colors. So I think the plan is going to be, we have our SVG hearts, which Shaw just pulled in there. And we also have our little, I don't know, particles? We'll call them particles. Uh, there's ah, too fast to count. It looks like there's seven, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just do six and, you know, make yeah, it all even. there's seven. Okay, so I'll just do like dot particle times six unless you want to do seven i mean uh, I don't know. it's fine whichever uh yeah we'll, we'll do the dynamic calculations anyway so uh all right let me uh let me also forgot to mention the reason we're doing this is because valentine's day is just around the corner it is it so is. if you haven't bought your overpriced chocolates yet don't worry you have three days until you could buy them for like half the price. So, uh, see, my favorite are the uh, conversation hearts. Last year was a was a dark <laughs> time. Uh, remember how the company like shut down and uh, and was not uh, was not producing the hearts. That was uh, that was very sad. Oh, it's a go like button. All right, adding a little bit of shadow. So shadows blending with color sort of work weird. Um, don't know if you've noticed that, but sometimes when you uh, like give it a color other than black, it tends to work better. Oh, yes. I, I, I always use black, but um, oh, wait, that, that didn't really work, did it? Where's my box shadow? Oh, it's there. It's just really faint. <laughs> um, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red of the rose, or not the rose, the hearts. Why am I? All right, color hearts. I'm so I have a color hearts CSS variable, and so we could 
There you go. No, I've got the. Oh, okay. You're actually going to use that. Oh, wow. Sheesh. <laughs> that is old. <laughs> All right. So maybe, maybe not that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, stroke. Of our heart color, is that right? Color heart. Okay. Do you just... do you like to namespace your variables? Uh, yeah, I do. Just because you know, I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> I, I like over engineering things. It's yes. very very helpful. All right. So for particle, let's just give this height 0.5 m's. Bit. M is sort of our thing that Sean and I negotiated. He allowed me to, to uh, position relative everything, and I allowed him to M everything instead of rem. So yeah, that's our that's our compromise. <laughs> uh, so I, I like M's for a few reasons. It it gives you one spot to kind of set the sizing of things, and uh, it, it just it helps a lot. Uh, to be able to to do to do that, and then you can use all your M units. And if you've got like uh, paragraph styles and then title styles, like your headings, uh, you can you can easily base those off the M's rather than having to like maintain this kind of like base font size with your rims and then passing all that down. Uh, How do you spell fuchsia? Fuchsia. F U S C H I A. Hey Chris, thanks for thanks for joining us. Okay, Chris Bacardi so, in the chat. Hey Chris, super cool. All right, so my particles not showing up. Sort of bummed about that. Uh, yeah, I position absoluted it. Uh, I don't know. If... I guess I could just go in the inspector and see where those particles are. Oh, they're 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 at the top, but they're oh, they're there. Yeah, ah, I, I, because I, I guess fuchsia is not a color. Right, oh, it doesn't look like you know that's I, that's recognized. You know what? Maybe I spelled it wrong. Ah, I did. It's fuchsia. Ah, oh, I was so close. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so close. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is a difficult word to spell. Um, I would I would fail a uh, spelling test if that were one of the words. Uh, yeah. I'd definitely fail. Uh, so actually, instead of position absolute, we could probably uh, use our grid layering trick. What do you think? Uh -huh. OK. So you, you basically want to center them? Right. So what we'll do, display grid. Ooh. Uh, yeah, and then and then we'll push them out from the center. That that's how they animate. Um, we'll just do like a rotation, as is what I was thinking. Uh, line item center, um, and then we'll do everything grid area one over one. Okay, I'm also adding a ripple element, and that's going to be that ripple that you see once you click the heart. That little circle that just uh, you know goes away. Uh, and we, we have done that before. Just trying to remember we that there was a clever technique that we, well, I'm sure it has something to do with border radius and all of that. Hmm. Uh, Actually, I'm sure that we did something like that. So, dot io. What are you referring to? So, do you remember the, we had, one of the animations we did was a cat video. Yes. And yes, you I remember click that. it, Find the and the, the play button, it had that ripple effect. So, this is why I love, we could just go back and see, like, we have done this, we have figured it out, but it, it was just so long ago. Ah, I found Thanks for following, DJ Connor. Uh, it was expanding video player. Yeah, uh, post that link in the, in the chat. I shall. All right, so this expanding video player, what I want to do is I want to grab that, um, that play animation uh, when you click the button, and then you have that, uh, yeah, just that ripple effect happen. I don't know if I called it ripple in here. 
Uh, let's see. That beautiful cat. Yep. Should have been a dog. <laughs> Sorry. No, like dogs. no, no. <laughs> oh, uh, I forget you have, you have cats and yes, everything. Yes, they're adorable. Come on. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that that's one of those weird things. Um, button elements have very specific uh, display properties that like override in a lot of weird ways. So you actually can't have a display grid button. Mm, okay. You can so have a container do... inside of of a button that uh, is is uh, display grid. But uh, now, if if Andy weren't here, I would say let's just make that a div. Well, so but... that's that's what I did. Uh, oh. Just just so you know why. <laughs> Look away, Andy. <laughs> we did that. Um, that is why. Zero. Yeah. If you have any accessibility tips for making a div act like a button, I'm sure that there's a ton of things you have to do, which is why it's best to use a button, but. Uh, right, for, yeah. for actual like <laughs> click interactions and things, uh, you definitely want to use a button. Um, for this, uh, we'll, we'll probably need to wrap that um, to, uh, it, we'll probably need to wrap that actually, um, but yeah. Let's see. Display grid, we've got that. Got justify content mm -hmm. center and align item center. Why do they not why are the particles not aligning? Gosh. <laughs> How big is an M? Uh an M right now is ten viewport width. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so let me actually size. Yeah, basically with this, we need everything centered. And I'm sure that we could just, um, you know, just flex box or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, that, that should be what's happening with the display grid. Um, it should be aligning everything centered. Um, but I don't know what's happening. Oh, it's, it's got some weird padding on it. We need to reset the padding and the margin. Too. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you do have to reset when you're working with um, buttons. Oh, uh, but that's actually not what's happening. I don't. Hmm. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, is it because it's position absolute? Kind of. <laughs> uh, fun times. Uh, so a question in the chat. Hey, just watched the animation video from Dribble. A lot happens. Do you watch these in slow motion prior to the stream? Uh, essentially, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll kind of uh, tab through a little bit and uh, and check out what's happening. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot a lot of little little touches to this kind of. Kind of hard to see when scrubbing through the video, but <laughs> kind of hard to see. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had to. Uh, you, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I, I really didn't. I'm contractually obliged. <laughs> okay, did we did we get everything centered there? Yeah, seems like it. Okay, I am gonna make this a button, and then I'm gonna do a. a a div wrapper. And then that will serve as our grid. Um, and that gets everything layered. And let's do an opacity on those, make sure the heart is centered. If you hover over, you'll see the ripple effect. Oh, nice. It's a bit fast, but. It is. And do we have overflow hidden happening somewhere? Yeah, we do. That's on the, that's on the ripple. Oh, okay. 
Are you? So let's see what you got going on down there. Okay, you're using a pseudo element for that. That's cool. Yep. I'm sure we could uh, see five. There we go. I like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we do is pixel pushing, but not pixel pushing, just number pushing. Code, code pushing, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've determined that 4.5 is the perfect number for this, though. Wait, no, it's not. <laughs> 4. Uh, 4.7. See, well, what I wanted to do is just escape it barely. All right, so probably 4.8. There we go. Uh, I'm I'm still seeing a little bit. Oh my you, you probably gosh! Four point eight one. <laughs> uh, you probably need to just bump it up to five. I'm gonna do four point nine. No, I, I can't commit to five. Yeah, it's still still hanging in there. Just a, you know, what? all right, fine, fine. Bit. I'll do it five. <laughs> uh, just for rounding errors, it's okay. It's safe. Well, Five it is, so we'll do that. All right, cool. So uh, we have our particles, right? Uh, yes, but they are not uh, are, are they really censored? styled in any way, um, and they should be much smaller. OK. Uh, so what I'll do is, I don't know why you're highlighting all of the each team out, but I'm going to add oh, yeah. an index to style equals i like should we start at zero or one yeah we'll start at zero i think that's what we typically do so yeah that is zero through five and so we have that css variable in there and that way we could adjust the rotation mm -hmm. of each one that's what i'm thinking yes so right uh so typically what we'll want is a total as well um so we'll do style equals total articles. What is it? Six. Yeah, and I, I will actually not do the zero indexing. Um, I'm, I'm trying to treat it a little more like nth child in general. Um, so particle, we'll do transform. I, I will say, like, having the index different from nth child is helpful when you do want that zero to play the role of not having any delay or anything. And so right. having zero helps you not do minus one. <laughs> that, that's that. what I end up doing for uh, splitting. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it just depends on, on what you're doing, um, whether that works or not. All right, so what we're going to do is apply a rotation based on those variables. So we'll do, um, uh, let's go ahead and make this a separate var percentage. Um, and what I do here is calc uh, var i divided by var total particles. I'll add that total in there. And so you, you could imagine I, I that. Did. Oh, well, I'll add it again. <laughs> Please. Uh, <laughs> And so what this will do is give us kind of a zero to one percent uh, value for that. So then we can use that down here, percentage uh, times one turn. And you could do that. I, I usually use degrees, but I've been using turn more and more just because I'm like, OK, now that makes a lot it, more sense. It makes the math a lot simpler. Um, and so we'll do translate y at zero and then okay yeah so we'll do that down here uh, so I, I think it needs to be actually translate y um, based on the way we're hey it looks like the react symbol so i'll, I'll tell you why this isn't working it's because that rotate value this calc here percentage that itself needs to be the in a uh you know no it, it needs to be the first value we need to rotate and then translate um that's that's the issue well that and we need that value that theta value i wonder if that works <laughs> <laughs> want to uh, try you probably don't but that's probably okay. not but watch 
It's totally going to work. Haha, <laughs> it works. We're using it. <laughs> I don't make the rules. We're using it. It's theta. Uh... If you've ever read a math book. <laughs> So, so we're going to use that theta variable also like when we hover as well. So that way they, they, they go off in their respective directions. Yes. So, okay. So I've got that in there. It doesn't need to be in. Calc. Oh, it it's works. Calculated. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so basically each of those lines is rotated in a particular direction. And then um, we we apply that translate after the rotation, so that it's gonna it's gonna move in the direction of that of that rotation. Nice. Uh, and we can probably add a scale y or a scale. Yeah, y. I'm just looking at the video again, seeing how those particles move. So they they do stretch out. So they have that stretching effect, and that's right. what. And there's also a pause right before they disappear into the other, like the particles they are. So that's why I'm thinking a keyframe animation might be best for this. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to trigger an animation on focus. Yeah, uh, that that's why I switched back over to a button. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll do like button focus. Um, and then we'll do animation uh, particles out. Uh, What's it like? Point uh, var duration var easing, and then um, keyframes particles out. We'll do 100%. Uh, will be this. Um, but we'll need to add some steps in there. So let's let's see how that works. It does not. Oh, because we weren't focusing. Uh, I I know this is a faux pas, but we're going to add outline none on the focus. Yeah. So, so quick. So fast. Uh, we can probably tone down the translation yeah probably and then we can actually just use m's for that value yeah there we go all right and then uh can probably set both on that and then do like 70 percent We'll do translate y 0.8 and then scale one and then scale back to scale zero at the end. There, something like that. And let's slow down this duration. That feels very fast uh, at the moment. Our easing may need to be adjusted too. Okay, and we, yeah. Okay, so the scale needs to be after all of that. Instead. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that kind of gives a black hole impression, mm -hmm, like, sucking it back in. Yeah, that's that's not how particles work. Nope. They just disappear, making it a little bit easier to read. So we have our rotation, oh, that's beautiful. which sets the direction, the trans, uh, the translation, which shoots it out, and then the scale, which, all right, let's, aha, very nice. Uh, what I'm thinking, too, is that the transform origin, did you just change that? Or No, I haven't adjusted transform origin or anything. All right, so it's not the center? Uh, it should be the center. Uh, should be probably the... Well, hmm. Uh, it might it might be a little weird right now because of how we're translating them. Um, translating and then and then scaling. Yeah. Um, so maybe move the scale before the translate. It is so difficult to see each of these particles individually through the frames in the video. <laughs> it is. But we are trying. No, okay. We don't want we don't want scale before translate. It's not the answer. Um, I think we're 
It's it's pretty close there. Um, yeah. And well, th oh, one of the one of the problems is that this happens, uh, and this is a problem we've had before. This animation happens on focus and active as well, but we might want it to happen only when it's not active, right? Uh, so say that again. Well, so right now, if I hold down my mouse button, I expect the button to be depressed. Oh, right. uh, because it is single on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I uh, I don't want the animation to happen. Uh, it's not right. feeling so very animated. That would be active state, or yeah. so. Hmm. Let's see. You trigger trigger focus. Uh, so active is when it's actively. Selected, I think. Yeah. I mean, not, not a huge problem. I think we did something similar um, with one of our candy examples, ironically enough, or coincidentally enough. Yeah, so it looks like uh, active will do it. And that way, whenever you hold down the button, that works. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably want to trigger an animation for the, uh, for the ripple as well. Yeah. Um, rather than using transition. So what I'm doing right now, I'm putting the colors for each one individually as uh, CSS variables in the inline style. Nice. Which I think you're of the same opinion, but basically the only thing you should ever put in inline styles are CSS variables. It's really powerful for that. Yes. And hard coding anything else is just a recipe for disaster. Those. So I add the, the CSS variable color to each of the particles so we could actually set this background color fuchsia, which we took entirely too long figuring out how to spell that. I could just put their color. Am I the only one who says there and not bar? That's what I discovered. Probably. It, okay. one, <laughs> one, it's not uh, a bar variable, it's a variable. <laughs> there. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that's. I, I think it's okay to say that either way. What one other word that we say all the time uh, on the on the show is uh, boolean. What is it? Boolean or boolean? Boolean. 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 <laughs> I am belayed in my. Because uh... <laughs> it's it's George Bool. Well, okay, so his his name. George Bool, like it's it's one syllable. The E is part of that one syllable. So technically it should be Bool and <laughs> No, probably not. Uh, that's weird. Um, All right, so yeah, I say there. Other people pronounce it let or const, but that's 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 their thing. That's a different debate. <laughs> yeah, I feel like two M is a little bit too big. So, wow, <laughs> I bumped up the size a little bit. Uh, okay, so does it only work when you hold down the button? Yes, that's cool. Yeah, I it it probably should be focus um, if we're just uh, if we just want it to trigger. On click, because uh, having to hold down the mouse button for it is a little silly. Go. Uh, okay. Any idea why the transition for fill is not working? Oh, it's probably because I need to target the actual path. So 
So in CSS Psygnos, we both, or maybe it's just me, do this weird thing where we put the semicolon on its own line just because it makes it easier to comment out things. <laughs> yeah, uh, if, if I'm actively commenting things in and out, then I will, yeah. I'm trying something, um, something forbidden, uh -oh. which is animating with, or not animating with, <laughs> yes, animating, animating height. or animating height, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. It gives it more of a particle effect. But yeah, we could also like, uh, we have 70% and that scale one. So it's still going to have that stretched effect. And then over here we could scale zero. So we talked about either last episode or previous episode where, you know, sometimes it's okay to, uh, to animate, um, animate with, if it's a leaf node, which means if it is, uh, on a tree, on a, well, yeah. If it doesn't have any children. Yes. Uh, right. So yeah, you've got, you've got a really nice, um, effect happening there, uh, with that, um, let's get forwards maybe. And I can't. can't tell why my fill animation is not working. It's like we also need to animate the heart a little bit. Heart mounts. So I think the last piece of this puzzle um, is the actual depression of the button. <laughs> the depression of the button. That sounds like a uh, like an opera, <laughs> you know, like a modern opera. The depression of the button, and it's sung in Italian. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, just to make this high performance. I don't really like saying the word performance, but I'm going to move that box shadow. This is something we've done a lot of times. I'm going to move it to its own pseudo elements. Uh, don't, don't have too much time here. Uh, just, I know. Yeah. yeah, that's just going to be real quick. In fact, it's done right before your wow. eyes. Oh, wait, but it's Amazing. a square. <laughs> OK, near it. And so uh, we're, we're doing this on focus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we're doing it on focus and basically on well actually I could I could even do this on Yeah, focus. Focus works. And we could basically move that before we could uh scale it and yeah. So transition transform uh easing and with that i think we're yeah we're oh, almost is that done why it's not working or easing Ugh. <laughs> yeah oh wait i i think in some episodes we call it ease or easing or something like that oh my gosh yeah that's <laughs> that's totally it ah you jerk yeah. uh. uh so i could say transform scale 0 0.8 right, let's try that well, it does go away. It just becomes really small. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably need a Z index on that. Yep. Uh, probably negative one. I negative think. what? Five hundred? <sighs> yes. It's weird. It's still above the background. Uh, I think the background needs to be shifted off to its own element. Uh, Probably. Or we could do... Uh, 
this is a little silly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that here, background color, whites, and that's going to be like a <laughs> radius inherit. Um, but then this should be Z0 so that everything shows up on top of it. So yeah, using pseudo elements for fun and profit. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so now the... Yeah, I'm working on um, yeah, just a little bit. Transition. Here it go. This should... Um... Yeah, the, the like wrapper. I'll just give that a Z in the next one. I don't know why it wasn't, but there we go. So dark shadow is not really moving. Oh, because you're working on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Wow. Uh, that's pretty pretty massive. Um... <laughs> yeah, that is a <laughs> really. Really pushing that button. Yeah, uh, that should <laughs> should be a little bit better. Uh, probably translate Y before the scale there. Hey, thanks so much. Nice to see you in the in the chat here, uh, <laughs> Jason. Uh, if you haven't checked out Learn with Jason, uh, you should give that a Google. That's a really great show. I, weren't you on that? David? Um, yes. Learn with Jason. Hey, Jason Langsdorf. Uh, yes, uh, that, that was when he was working at Gatsby, which he no longer is. He's working on that Lify, I believe. Right? <laughs> uh, I, all the, uh, no, all the good like devs are, person. it seems. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gatsby and that Lify, and all of them are just taking so many, so many good devs. Uh, so I don't think we want an animation for that because that is an active uh, state. So uh, when okay. you're holding it down, you want it to engage. Oh, I was going to say like for focus, you know, like uh, animation diffres one three seconds per using or something like that. And then that's going to, that way when you click it, it just jumps down and up. Gotcha. So actually, that that works pretty well. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm liking this. Yeah, I think right. we're in a good in a good spot with this. We are. We are. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Let's let's uh, wrap this up here. Uh, sure. So we're now moving into a section of the show known as key flexions. Uh, a quick review of the techniques used to build this animation. Um, which is not running very smoothly on my machine because I'm streaming and recording. But if you have any <laughs> questions, uh, ask us in the chat. We'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Also, hey, if you've enjoyed watching us so far, you could definitely follow and subscribe here or on YouTube, or you could pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers, or you could follow us on Twitter at keyframers. And the links are available right below. We also have a merch store. Yeah. You should check that out. Uh, keyframe.rs slash merch. Uh, we actually have some brand new items in there um, with uh, CSS lines, iHeart, FSM, merge conflict, ship it, uh, and of course the classic restro JavaScript and Boolean buddies. Get in there, uh, check those out. Uh, and everything is on sale right now. I think it's like two or three bucks off uh, the shirts. Uh, which is really fantastic. No so get out there and uh, and make some make some purchases. That helps us out a ton. At any rate, uh, today's animation was like button animation. Press L heart emoji by Christian Vizcara. Um, a really great uh, little dribble here. Um, a lot of fun little elements to it uh, that we have recreated with HTML and CSS. Mm-hmm. I wish that were running a little smoother on my machine right now, but it um, runs so smooth on mine though. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> the techniques we're using are very performant. My machine is just under a lot of stress uh, lately. It's you know been been working hard. Uh, 
at any rate. Uh, so let's uh, look at the HTML really quick. We've got a button, class like button, uh, and then a like wrapper inside of that. Uh, and within that, we have several different elements. We've got a ripple element, we've got an SVG heart, uh, and then we have uh, six particles. Uh, and that is all that's needed uh, with the CSS here uh, to get that going. Um, so the really quick with the like wrapper, uh, we have that inside because button elements actually cannot be display grid and we wanted everything to be uh, layered using our grid layer technique. So with our like wrapper here, uh, we have display grid, align item center, justify content center, and then all of the elements inside are grid area one one. Uh, which layers everything on top of each other so that we don't have to worry about centering everything. Uh, we, the grid just handles that for us. Mm. Uh, and I then, love grid. Uh, the, the heart element, so when you, when you click it, you can see you know, it fills in, uh, but it also kind of does that, that little bounce. Um, so that's happening with uh, like button focus. We've got the fill uh, happening there, just going from transparent to the uh, color heart variable that we have. And then also on, um, on focus, uh, we have an animation being triggered, heart bounce here that uh, scales it down uh, to 0.7 at 40% and then scales back up. So it's kind of a, a quick little bounce there, um, which is great. Uh, you, would you like to talk about the particles here? Yeah, as I am messing them up right now. Oh, no. I'm just making the duration a little bit longer. But the particles are just HTML elements, and we could definitely change those to SVG elements, except that transform, rotation, all that sort of stuff works a little bit weirdly with particles. So that's why we played it safe this time and used actual HTML elements. What we did is we added two properties, uh, custom properties, to each of those elements. We added I, which is the index of each element, which uh, one index. I would have zero indexed it, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, color to each one. And so we're using those CSS variables in the CSS, of course, that's what they're for. And uh, we're calculating a few things with it. First is the percentage, which is going to help us out in our rotation calculation, uh, which is over here represented by double dash theta, which is legal CSS, we found that. So <laughs> we're using this double dash theta uh, in order to transform it properly and make it, you know, just go evenly in each cardinal direction. And we're using an animation to do that because there's a few things happening with each of the particles. First of all, uh, they're being translated and we're translating it on the Y axis so that it shoots out in its appropriate direction. Uh, we're also scaling it at the very end. So uh, between zero and 60 frames, it's going to stay the same scale. We're also using the heights, and we're animating the heights because that's going to give it that stretchy effect when you when you click on it. And that's that's a lot more natural looking than just stretching out via a, uh, a transform or a scale. Um, but yeah, so at the very end, between 60 and 100%, we scale to zero, and that allows the particles to disappear into the other. Yeah. Uh, yes, and, and that's, that's a really cool technique. I, I like that a lot. Uh, rotating things around a center and then translating them out to get them uh, going out in different directions. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's really handy. Uh, hey, thanks so much, Jason, for picking up some stickers from the merch store, setting a good example there. Uh, for the ripple, um, and, and actually the, the shadow and the background, we have a we're just using pseudo elements for that um, so that we kind of kind of animate those uh, independently. So the ripple is is an element with a big border um, that's just scaled down and, and uh, to zero. And then whenever you focus, that uh, animates out um, so that it scales all the way out. Uh, but it gives that nice, you know, kind of Google material ripple effect. Uh, mm -hmm. And the same, the same kind of thing happens with the, with the shadow and the, um, and the background. Those are actually both pseudo elements. So this sh nice shadow right here, and then this uh, background element, are two different pseudo elements. And on uh, on the active state, it depresses down, 
a little bit, uh, and and we've got an animation in there as well for that to to give kind of that button pressed effect. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it, right? Is there anything mm-hmm. else? That's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, yeah, uh, that's basically all we have for you today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode and would like to see more from David and I, you can support us uh, by pledging at patreon.com slash keyframers. Join our list of amazing patrons that help us out each month. You can also visit our merch store at keyframe.rs slash merch. Get some rad, rad stuff. And there's a sale happening through the 16th um, that you'll want to... Uh, get that discount from uh that's that's going to be super helpful for you uh you can also uh like and subscribe at youtube.com slash keyframers where we have uh this episode and more uh available uh so check that out Mm -hmm. by the way if you want to see something really cool in the next episode we do accept submissions so you could tweet at keyframers or just reach out to me or shaw with any animations you'd like to see this week, I just thought we would do a nice hard button animation. Yeah. Well, Sean Tis, and I were just tossing around ideas, and we're like, this looks really cool, so we did it. Tis the uh, season for... Uh, it is, arts. it is, coming up in a couple of days. So uh, hopefully this is a reminder to some of you if you forgot to, uh, you know, get some Valentine's stuff. You, know, or whatever. you, you can order something <laughs> from the merch store for your significant other. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a heart CSS it, thing. It won't arrive in time, but you can show them it the receipt. It will not, but it's the that. thought that matters. You right. could present the receipts to them and said, I got you this. Yes. And that's better than roses, because it won't die. It is. Roses are already dead. Also, be sure to share this video and demo across your social platforms. Yes. Thank you all so much for joining us. We've had a great time with you t- this uh, this day, this evening, whatever. Whatever time, time it is for you. For you. <laughs> uh, until next time, adios, and amigos. Adios. We heart you. <laughs>